The Battle of Seeping, also known as the Battle to Liberate Seeping, was a battle fought between the Communist forces and the Nationalist forces in Jilin, China for the control of Seeping during the Chinese Civil War. It took place immediately after the Soviet Red Army withdrew from Seeping in March 1946, and resulted in a Communist victory. Chapter 1, Prelude On January 8, 1946, Lu Hondong, the commander of the Nationalist 107th Division, arrived at Seeping with over a hundred associates to discuss the city's transfer from the Soviet Red Army to the Chinese administration. The Red Army still occupied the city at the time. Subsequently, on January 10, the Nationalists created the Laobei Province, with Lu Hondong named the chairman of the province, and Nationalist Provincial Governmental Member Li Chonggo named the mayor of Seeping. The Nationalists had neither sufficient troops nor enough transportation assets to effectively assume control of the previously Japanese-occupied region of China, and they could not spare enough forces to hold the city long enough for reinforcements to arrive. The Nationalists at Seeping recruited bandits in the region, including members from the Good Under the Heaven flying over the grass gangs, to secure the local garrison. Enlisting the gangs were angered by the local populace, which already blamed the Nationalists for losing the region to the Japanese invaders. As a result, the Nationalists lost popular support in the region, a problem exacerbated by the fact that the hired bandits had fought the Nationalists both prior to and during the war, and had cooperated with the Japanese invaders. The Nationalists recruited forces from the former Japanese puppet regime Montukuo, such as the Iron Stone units, to be part of the local garrison, which only increased the hatred from the local populace, which had suffered under the Japanese puppet regime. Chapter 2 First Nationalist Offensive and Counterattack On January 25, 1946, Lu Senkao, the commander in chief of the Communist Western Manchurian Military District, and Li Fuchun, the political commissar of the Communist Western Manchurian Military District, redeployed the Communist 10th Brigade and the 24th Brigade to the Pear Tree. Changtu, and Gondyuling regions surrounding Seeping. In an attempt to eradicate the enemy and secure the city, the Nationalists launched an offensive against the Communists in late February. However, the former bandits proved no match for combat-hardened Communists who were veterans of the Second Sino-Japanese War. The Nationalist force, consisting of former bandits from the pressuring Nine Dragons gang, attacked the communist seeping group and inflicted more than a dozen fatalities and injured a communist squadron commander, Cheng Bishen. The communists quickly counter-attacked, completely annihilating the attacking nationalists. The failed attempt by the nationalists provided an excellent excuse for the communists to counter-attack, and, in a short period of several days, the nationalist strongholds at Crouching Tiger Village, Meilin, Baokang, and Twin Mountains fell into Communist hands. All the Nationalist garrisons guarding these strongholds were former bandits from various gangs, including the Old Second Brother, Seven Stars, Old Man Smile and Nine Provinces gangs. The Nationalists were forced back on the defensive after their failure in the rural regions and the fighting temporarily stopped. Chapter 3, Communist Capture of Seeping the clash resumed after the Soviet Red Army withdrew from Seeping on March 13, 1946. On March 15, the airport in the western suburb of the city had fallen into communist hands, and by the next day, the 6,000-strong communist force had completed their siege of the city. At 4 a.m. on March 17, the assault on the city began. After ten hours of fierce battle, the city succumbed, with its entire garrison defeated. The Nationalist commander Lu Hondong and his deputies, the former bandit chieftains Wang Dohua and Wang Yao Dong were captured alive. However, a few of the defenders, including the Nationalist Chief of Security Zhang Dongkai and Deputy Chief of Security Wang Yongqing, were able to escape by disguising themselves as beggars. The Communists had also captured 69 machine guns, 32 artillery pieces, over 2,000 firearms, nearly two dozen automobiles, over 300 military horses and large amount of supplies from the nationalist defenders. 
the nationalists lost support from the local populace as a result of the defeat. Chapter 4, Nationalist Counteroffensive Chiang Kai-shek was furious that the city had fallen and sent out a force to retake the city. By March 21, 1946, the nationalists had taken nearby Liaoyang, and by March 22, the nationalists took Fuxun and Tieling. On March 22, Chiang Kai-shek ordered Zoin Shui, the chief nationalist administrator in northeast China, and Zheng Donggo, the commander-in-chief of the nationalist force in northeast China, to launch a counteroffensive targeting Xiping from the provincial capital of Shenyang. The goal was to take Xiping before April 2. The nationalist offensive was spearheaded by the new 1st Army and the 71st Army, and the nationalist deputy commander-in-chief Liang Wazheng was named as the frontline commander to set up headquarters at Tierling. Zhang's plan collapsed when melting snow turned the roads to mud, bogging down the highly mechanized nationalist force, making it unable to reach Xiping. The nationalists would also suffer another defeat in the Jinjichen campaign due to the harsh terrain which was hostile to the highly mechanized force. 